Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12, where I asked the question, could strata launches rock, the largest plane in the world by capacity right now, carry the max space plane, which is what you see here. The max space plane was one of the options for the Soviet Union to have a competitor to the United States' space shuttle. The actual one that they picked was Buran on the Energia rocket, and that was more of a direct uh, copy of the space shuttle. It was a lot, uh, it was very similar to the space shuttle in many ways, let's put it that way, especially in general shape and capacity and stuff like that, though it had some novel features. But this was a much more interesting idea because it was a small little plane. Uh, it's a cute little plane, much smaller than the space shuttle, but it still has a cargo bay, and they correctly assessed that the space shuttles had a deficiency. It was trying to do too much. And certainly with the budget of the Soviet Union, they couldn't possibly run something like that constantly. So this was actually in budget. It had the benefit of being actually doable. It also had some of the fanciest engines ever designed, the RD-704s, or as a unit when they're in a pair like this, they call it the RD-701. They're fancy because they switch between two different propellant mixtures. First, they start off with three propellants, kerosene, hydrogen, and oxygen. And then it switches mode to just use two, hydrogen and oxygen. The reason for this is because if they are using the three propellants, they get more thrust. And so initially, when it's uh, trying to get out of the atmosphere, it is going to use the three propellants to get more thrust so it can do that quickly. And then once it's gotten high enough, it switches to just the two, hydrogen and oxygen, which is a more efficient mix, and but it's less thrust. So uh, it'll get the more efficient consumption of the propellant once it's gotten a decent height. That's a very fancy feature of those engines. And uh, so in this tank, we also have to have the right mixture of these things. And that is not the right mixture. So this is a problem that we've had. And I'll have to double check what's going on with that. So if you've downloaded my Max Space Plane before, and actually this model is not mine, I adapted it. It was from buran.ru. Uh, but the problem was that uh, Realism Overhaul had made a particular configuration for these engines initially, and they changed the fuel mix on me. And so now instead of kerosene, it uses RG1. That was not my decision. Uh, that was their decision. And the, the, uh, so I have to replace, I had uh, made the change, but the one that was attached on here didn't have the RG1. So now it has to have the RG1. Now we have the right mix. So this rode on the back of an AN-225, which is a huge cargo plane. Unfortunately, the only one was destroyed during the war between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, so that's one reason why Strata Launch is the largest plane by capacity. Uh, otherwise, AN-225 would be. Uh, but, well, now can we launch it on uh, Strata Launch? Now, this doesn't exist in real life right now, but I wanted to see if it could be launched by Strata Launch since I have a Strata Launch. I also have an AN-225. But Strata Launch has a positive aspect to it, which I'll show you once we have it put together with Strata Launch. So, with the AN-225, Max and its external tank would ride on the top of it. Now, this is a bad thing. Uh, I know it's a bad thing because I kept trying to deal with that fact, and it was very difficult. Um, it's a bad thing because once the AN-225 releases the very heavy Max space plane and its tank, uh, the AN-225 has this huge wing, and it tends to go up. And it doesn't matter what, I mean, you'd have to force it down. But in Kerbal Space Program, in this context, we can't control both at the same time. So they would probably have had the pilots pitched down away from the max space plane. And at the same time, the max space plane is really, really heavy and has a tiny, tiny wing. And uh, it needs its engine gimbling to be able to pitch up. And so it tends to go down initially. Uh, when it separates and so the two tend to crash into each other uh, of course in real life it, it would still be a problem but in real life they would make sure that the pilots really forcefully moved away from each other I would suppose this uh, strata launch does not have this problem because uh, well it slings the 
max space plane or any payload underneath here. So since it's down here, it just drops it and that's fine. Uh, the plane will naturally want to drop anyway. And uh, after the only thing is I have to make sure that the vertical stabilizer doesn't hit the wing. But other than that, it's a little bit easier to separate uh, the max space plane off of strata launch than it is off of the back of the AN-225. Now, this isn't a normal strata launch. You'll note canards. And the reason we have canards is because of, uh, well, mainly because the center of mass is brought really far forward by the fact that the uh, oxygen is in the front of this tank. And the reason why the oxygen is in the front of this tank, and it's very, very heavy oxygen, it's 193.5 tons of oxygen in the front of this tank, is so that the engines back here can point through it. Uh, if the oxygen was in the back, the engines will not be able to effectively control the plane when it's carrying this huge external tank, and it'll just flip all over the place. And in fact, it's already pretty hard to control, but it certainly needs its center mass to be very far forward. And if its center mass is very far forward, it's a 250-ton tank. Uh, that brings the center of mass of the whole plane really far forward, and... Hence the canards. So that's why they're there to try and pull the center of lift a little bit further forward as well. Uh, this was not as much of a problem when I was trying out the strata launch with the Orion carrier plane because the Orion carrier plane has a really big wing pretty far rear, uh, especially the way it's mounted onto strata launch. Well, I mean, it's uh, rear of the main wing here, and the Orion carrier plane does not have much mass forward of its wing. So this is a particular issue so yeah it's been a little bit of fun trying to test this and let's take it outside and do it <laughs> let me see if i can bring it to orbit i have not brought it to orbit i have not released the max space plane from strata launch and brought it to orbit yet we'll see how close i can get all right i do have it on launch clamps because otherwise when it was brought out to the runway it tended to bounce we are at tampico because in this particular install that's where I have stuff so I'm going to release and I had locked the fuel for the engines here so that the launch clamps wouldn't fill it up and throttle up here we go now I still haven't corrected the fact that the horizontal stabilizers seem to have the controls visibly reversed even though they work properly and let's steer so that we're closer to the center of the runway here we are just going to take the whole runway okay pulling up so strictly speaking this isn't the straddle launch rock because i've added canards but this is what we would need to do to carry max let's put it that way also the canards are compensating for the fact that the center portion of the wing between the two bodies effectively doesn't get any lift right now. It's gonna take some time to get to altitude. And we're not gonna get as high or fast as I probably wanted to get. So Strat Launch's rocks capacity is 250 tons. I think it's more like 265, it's just below the AN-225, which had 275. But the max space plane was by design the capacity of AN-225, so it's 275 tons. Very slowly turning here, the ailerons create a lot of drag too. Okay, finally turned towards the 90 degree mark. Okay, ascending after getting to nearly 200 meters per second. There it is. Well, obviously not with volumetric clouds here. There's just the 2D clouds. Okay, Mach 0.7, and we are continuing to ascend very slowly at about 5.45 kilometers up.
I'm definitely using Fizz Warp. Well, we're seven kilometers up and at Mach 0.73. I don't know how much I can push this further. Let me save it here. And I've got a control from Max now. Okay, double checking its fuel. Alright, well, let's try to drop. I'm going to ignite the engines first and then drop it. Making sure that they're in the right mode. Oh, they need to be in mode 1, not mode 2. Okay, riding far. Alright, with the sun setting behind us here. Ignition. Oh, they got unstable because of, oh, come on, uh, oh, well, okay, we need, we really need to light them fully before letting go. Well, because the engines spool up again, we end up losing some speed like this, and height. Well, all right, I'll take that speed. Okay, ignition. Alright, alright. I'll take SAS if I can get it. Yep, it's a struggle here. Because we're going through the transonic speeds. There's a lot of drag. And that's unavoidable. But up we go. And right now I have no idea whether we would make orbit. We'll see. Okay, let me switch to Smart ASS now. 90 seems fine, 55, and then roll 0. Initially, if I try to use Smart ASS, there's no way it's going to be able to control it going transonic like that. It's a cute little thing. With huge engines on its tail. Unlike Baran, it actually carries its engines back. Okay, switching now. Okay, we're in the other mode. It's just the hydrogen and oxygen now. Managed to do it for just 77.8 liters of uh, RG1 left. Good. If we can use our OMS engines, it'll be okay we would intend to dump the tank in the atmosphere anyway. But in a way, this verifies that Strato Launch is capable of launching a space plane like this, and therefore could do whichever space plane they plan on doing. Uh, I guess it's called Talon, or uh, I forget which one would actually be heading into orbit. Sometimes the wings do weird things. Uh, I, I don't know if we saw it this time, but they seem to separate from the body in a glitchy sort of way due to all the stresses involved. Uh, but they don't really separate, they just visually separate. They look like they separate. Well, that's all. Oh, they, they sort of did that when they wiggled. Okay, well, then we have the mounting point there. Anyway. Um, let me separate first, and throttle down RCS and maybe do a separation maneuver. Okay, well, we have to use a lot of the, yeah, not these, not these, who, not as separate from that as I wanted to be. Some rebalancing of these really is, might be necessary. Uh, nope, nope, stop, 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 stop. Those, those uh, OMS engines seem to be not quite pointing where they need to be pointing. 
And fortunately, they're just on or off. They don't throttle. They're built into the body. They have a lot of ignitions, so that's one good thing. So I can just, if they're tilting too far, stop it. But we have a lot of work to do to try to get to orbit here. <laughs> we certainly should not be doing this much with the little mess engines. Okay, well now it's holding it. Well, it's using a lot of pitch. And it's still deviating. So some trajectory optimization will be necessary and if the strata launch can bring us higher up that would be helpful and faster. All right, we are in orbit, uh, 207 by 164, a bit of a low orbit for now. 186 left, it could come back down. Uh, though, again, some optimization should be, uh, should be done to get into a better position and so that I can carry payload up. That's an important thing. Right now, without any payload, it's 23.55 tons, which is fairly heavy. Uh, it's not, well, especially with the huge engines in the back, it's not that small. As I try to get it in daylight. Up oh, there we go. Alright, with the planet below us. This test has, after a lot of other testing to make it happen, ended up a success. So, there's Max. Having been launched by Strata Launches Rock. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.